from the from the rising of the sun till it's going down your faithfulness see his sure your mercy is ever new from the rising from the rising of the sun till it's going down your faithfulness is sure your mercy is ever new no one knows no one knows like i know what god does for me that's why i praise him the way i do no one knows like i know what god does for me that's why i praise him the way i do that's why i sing that's why i shout glory that's why i dance for joy cause i'm grateful that's why i sing that's why i shout glory that's why i sing for joy cause i'm grateful no one knows from the rising of the sun till it's going down your faithfulness is sure your mercy is ever new from the rising from the rising of the sun till it's going down your faithfulness is sure your mercy is ever new no one knows no one knows like i can know what god does for me that's why i praise him the way i do no one knows like i can know what god does for me that's why i praise him the way i do that's why i sing that's why i shout hallelujah that's why i dance for joy cause i'm grateful that's why i sing that's why i shout hallelujah that's why i dance for joy cause i'm grateful no one knows welcome everybody it's your favorite program a chapter a day on here we get to know who we are in christ the power we possess the things we can and cannot do we should or should not do so that we can live a successful christian life here on earth and end up spending eternity with god in heaven heaven in view that's the whole idea oh yes and so we are on the chapter a day today we create an audio bible in the process and we get to study the word of god together our normal routine like the regular timetable for a chapter a day is that we go and start singing like you heard me singing if you started from the beginning and then we pray and hand over the session to god we do the birthday party where we give shout outs to people who are in our birthday book and then we pray for every single person who was born on that particular day <clears throat> and then we do the bible party which is what everyone is here for mostly a lot of people come here just for the bible party but like i always say don't just discard every other thing and say well i came here only for the bible party and so you don't get focused on the singing you don't get focused on what we're saying here there might be this little chit chat we're doing right here now and it might be where god wants to say something to you and um, because you just scroll through to well the bible party you're gonna miss that we don't want you missing that we really don't want you to miss anything on a chapter a day so it is of the essence it is important like you listen to everything that is going on on a chapter a day so guys we are on and it's your favorite bible study program it's your favorite audio bible creation program and we're here to know what god has said concerning us it's our blueprint the bible we don't have any other thing we can hold on to but the bible so hold on to it with tenacity and power and you're going to see god do a lot of amazing amazing really really amazing things for you so today is going to be psalms 10 on the bible party 
and it has 18 verses. Psalm 10 has 18 verses. Okay. It grows as it goes. It drops. It grows. It drops. It grows. And just like that. But it's all good. So let's get on. We hand over the session to God first before we come to this part of it. Father, we thank you for this day that you've made. Rejoice and be glad in it. We thank you because we know that you're here to bless us again. You're here to revive us again. You're here to enlighten us, to guide us, to direct us, to show us love, to save us, to keep us. You know, Lord, we're just here and we're totally and completely grateful. We can't thank you enough for all that you've done, you're doing, and you're still to do in our lives. We give you all the praise. We give you all the honor and adoration because you deserve it. You're the faithful father. You're the almighty God. You're the lion of the tribe of Judah. You're the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Father, we thank you for your faithfulness. We thank you for your loving kindness. We thank you for your tender mercies. We thank you for all the things you've done, you're doing, and you're still to do in our lives. We are grateful forever and ever from the bottom of our hearts. We thank you. You are a wonderful God. You are an awesome Father. There is none like unto thee. Amongst the gods who is like thee, you are glorious in holiness, fearful in praises, always doing wonders. Lord, we just want to give you all the praise. We just want to give you all the glory and adoration forevermore. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for in Jesus' name we pray. Increase while I decrease, so it's going to be you and you alone that will be seen, felt, heard, and experienced throughout this session. Let me fizzle out totally and completely. It has to be all you. Let the focus and the center of everything we do here today be you and you alone. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, and uh, amen, people. So now it's birthday party time. Let's get to find out those who are in the birthday book. Today, we have a couple of people. Let's get to be a blessing to them, pray for them, and do all that we have to do to make them get a swell time to make them get an amazing time on here okay guys are you ready ready or not here i come okay the first person is mom hannah madubia mom hannah i got to meet her when i was in ghana when the same church together when the choir together you know she sings very well she's also very caring very welcoming i mean like she's just an amazing person all around so um when i got to meet her she was so quiet i didn't think like we're going to be able to connect the way we did but we did she's quite an amazing person very hard working very pushful and also very friendly happy birthday to you mom hannah the next person is mr francis Ashon ashonkatai mr francis is actually a very good friend to one of my friends like we're in the same church together like he's my brother he's my friend and brother my Ghanaian friend and brother mr nikwe so myself and mr nikwe were being very good friends and then he got to introduce me to some of his friends and mr francis ashon katai is one of those persons mr francis loves god he's serving god with a passion I mean, he likes to do things for the kingdom. He likes evangelism. He also likes talking about God. Like, I don't think you can meet that guy and talk to him and you don't hear about God. No, it's not even possible. And that's why I like these kinds of people. Because when you're among these kinds of persons, you can actually live your Christian life beautifully. Because you're not scared of hurting people or stepping on toes or something. Or having to try to explain yourself as to why you're serving God unapologetically and why you're loving God unashamedly or something. So he's one of those persons as well. Then the next person is Mommy Eldad Nkoli Ikyomo. Mommy Eldad Nkoli Ikyomo is Pastor Edward's wife. I got to know them through one of my very good friends who was fellowshipping in the church at that time, World Eternity Ministries, when they were in Cameroon. So um, my friend used to fellowship at that church. We're really, really close. And then he started inviting me to come for events and um, church sessions and some crusades and stuff that were happening in their church. That's how I got to know mommy eldad and and she's very 
she's just so calm she's serene like oh my god a woman of god with class glit and glamour mommy all that happy birthday to you i really really do miss you she always has this broad smile on her face wherever you see her sometimes you think like okay some of them will just have to put their smile on their faces while they're in church and everything no i've seen her in church and out of church and she always has this beautiful smile plastered on her face happy birthday to you mommy god bless you the next person is mom wanzi gwendolyn mom wanzi gwendolyn were in the same secondary school um the same school together i was i think she was a class ahead of me either a class ahead of me or two classes ahead of me i'm not sure but she's a very nice person she's tall i used to admire her because of her height i've always wanted to be tall guys but i'm just average though so when i had to start walking around with my sister when my eldest sister and i were in the university together like she was so tall that is how i started wearing heels people of god i used to just wear flats i i i never used to be used to heels but now i feel more comfortable on heels than on flats i can literally dance on heels and feel more comfortable than when i'm dancing on flats story of my life anyway so i really really wanted to be tall but i'm average i'm grateful to god for my height it's a good one okay so yes I used to admire her for her height a lot. And then she speaks really good English. She's just so amazing. Like I just used to admire her like behind the scenes. And then I can't remember who got us to connect. Like I can't remember exactly who did that, but we, for some weird reason we connected. I was so happy. I was totally and completely excited. And then um from then on, we kind of separated because I left no she left before me so we kind of disconnected again and then somehow somehow social media reconnected us again i was totally and completely grateful like people say who social media app come and see me this is me social media has helped me in ways beyond my reasonable understanding i'm reconnecting with such amazing people as ma'am wanzi gwendolyn you're joking social media has done a whole lot in my life the next person is Mam Messi Kian. Mam Messi Kian, we went to the same high school together. She's a very loving person, very hard working, very pushful, and she's a very focused person. You know like door. I seen it. <laughs> this woman hates door with all her heart and then she loves God as well with a passion. She likes um she likes people doing things the right way and perfectly. She doesn't like all this been been here been here caught here caught here no she likes straightforward things and let them be done in order in decency and in order that's what i like about her and uh, i like the way she always talks about um when it comes to employing people which is something that i believe because a lot of times christians take they they feel like they want to take advantage of people and then they go spoil people's businesses and then now people start having the wrong impression about christians you know I always say to myself that if I have a company someday and I want to employ people, you're only going to have added advantage that you're a Christian if you are qualified. So for example, people come to me, I'm I'm scouting for for employees and people come to me and you all are qualified. That's the only thing that is going to be a plus to you that you're a Christian. If you're not qualified, I bet the job is not yours. I need to do that one. Business is for profit. It's not emotions. It's not um, um, denomination. It's not affiliations. Business is business. It is to make profits. And whoever is going to give me profits is the person who works well. Like, you know. So don't think you're going to come now like, oh, because you're my friend, because you're my this. So I'm going to give you the job. No, that's how Mam Kian always says sometimes. And some people just feel like, no, go and up yourself update yourself upgrade yourself so when you go you're qualified as much as the next person is qualified and then maybe your christian um virtues and and values makes you stand out except otherwise god says take this person that's a different thing entirely because if god is making you take that person over every other person even though they're not as qualified it means that he is going to qualify them to do what has to be done 
let's not mix those things up okay <laughs> so happy birthday to you mom mercy kian and god bless you she's a great mother a great wife a great friend i mean like she's just all around amazing it can only be god she would say so let's do this again happy birthday to you mom hannah Madubea, happy birthday to you, Mr. Francis Ashon Katai. Happy birthday to you, Mommy Eldan Koli Ikiomu. Happy birthday to you, Mom Wanzi Gwendoline. And happy birthday to you, Mom Mercy Kian. Let's do this. Let's pray for the birthday people and then we'll get right on with the Bible party. Like I said, our Bible party today is taken from the book of Psalms, chapter 10, and it has 18 verses. Are you ready guys let's get on i don't know where this guys is coming from my mouth oh. so you all should just bear with me like manage me like that <laughs> manage me like that oh manage me like that so let's pray for the birthday people we're praying for every single person who is born today sawadika could you report sawadika <laughs> good evening <ka. laughs> that's one of my big teachers in Kong Happy Day School and I love her very much her son speaks perfect English like great English I just love the little man when he's around me we're just speaking English and he's so fluent you I'll barely even realize that I'm in Thailand it's so nice okay let's go Father, we thank you for adding a new year to the lives of all these people who were born today, O oh God. We pray that you open the windows of heaven and pour the choices of your blessings upon their lives and rebuke every devourer in the mighty name of Jesus. Cause them to be trailblazers, space setters, and world changers in the mighty name of Jesus. Give them all that it takes to be able to go and conquer their world in Jesus' name. Cause them to increase in wisdom and stature, gaining favor before God and before men. In the mighty name of Jesus, let their gifts make a way for them, causing them to stand before kings, not before mean men. Father, I pray, O oh God, that you're going to enlighten their part, that their feet, their part is going to keep shining brighter and brighter unto the perfect day. Your word is going to be a lamb unto their feet and light to their part. Lord, I pray, O oh God, even as they step on the way and they're fulfilling destiny and going forward, O oh God, there's a possibility that they get to a place where they feel overwhelmed. They feel like you're no longer with them. You've abandoned them. They want to give up. They want to hang in the towel. Lord, I pray at such a point in time, they'll hear a clean, loud, clear voice that's going to say, this is the way walk that we need <clears throat> in the mighty name of Jesus. They will stay on course. They will not derail. They will not stray the part. And all glory will be given unto your holy name. People will glorify your father who is in heaven. Lord, I pray that you divinely connect them to people and things that will cause them to be their best and not stagnate in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, I pray, oh God, that you're going to divinely disconnect them from people and things that will cause them to stagnate or retrogress in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, I pray that you open their eyes to see those they're supposed to be destined to help us to and help these people when the time is right so they'll strategically position themselves. We pray, O oh God, that you also raise destiny helpers for them, O oh God, that are going to be strategically positioned. So when they also cry out for help, help is going to be made available to them in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, perfect all that content them. Give them a sound 126 day, a state of continuous laughter, singing, and rejoicing, so that in due time, O oh God, <clears throat> they'll be able to sing and glorify you, and they'll be able to come on here on a chapter a day and testify of your goodness upon their lives, O oh God, because this is going to be their best birthday yet. Father, I pray, O oh God, that you're going to cause them to not only get to the top, but get to the top and stay there permanently. You're the master strategy, so we believe that you're going to teach them all the strategies and techniques that are necessary and needed, O oh God, to not only get to the top, but to get there and stay there permanently. Thank you, King of Glory. Thank you, Abba Father, because we know you're a faithful God. Let money meet money in their pockets, blessings meet blessings in their lives, favor meets favor in their lives. Even as you clothe them with a garment of praise, honor, and favor. Lord, your word also says that, oh God, that you would back them up in every way, oh Father. I pray that that backing up would happen in Jesus' name. Your word also says that if they call on you, you answer and show them great and mighty things which they've never known. Lord, we pray, oh God, as they call on you, let that be a practical reality in their lives now and forevermore in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we thank you for your loving kindness. We thank you for your tender mercies. We thank you for all the amazing things you've done in their lives, you're doing, and you're still to do. 
We know that you're a faithful God. You never sleep nor slumber. You never lie. We know that you're going to do something spectacular for them, even this season. We seal every prayer request with the blood of Jesus. We know that you're coming through. Lord, we pray that even as there's an overflow of blessings upon their lives, O oh God, as the blessings encompass them as a shoe round about, no weapon formed the fashion against them shall prosper. There will be a blessing in their generation and beyond, O oh God. As these blessings encompass them, O oh Lord, round about, as they are just covered with an overflowing of blessings, people who come in contact with them will literally rub off of the blessings in their lives in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, King of Glory, because we know you always hear an answer. Take all the glory, take all the honor, but now and forevermore. For in Jesus' mighty and blessed name, we pray with thanksgiving. And all the saints shall say a ginormous amen. But you know I always like to sing the amen, right? Amen. 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 Let it be so. Amen. 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 In their lives. Amen. As we have prayed. Amen. Let it be in the love of the prayers. Amen. 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 In the blood of Jesus. Amen. Let it be so. Amen. In their lives. As we pray, we seal the prayers. Amen. 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 With the blood of Jesus. Amen. Let it be so. Amen. In their lives. As we pray. God bless you all tremendously. I may fill your bands with all good things. Enlarge your coast. And do for you that which no man can do. I always get to say I love you so very much. But God loves you way, way more. Happy birthday. Have a blast. It's Bible party time. People, are you ready? I'm ready. I was born ready. Psalms 10 and he has 18 verses. Let's get this Bible party started and going. Psalms 10. Why standest thou afar off, O Lord? Why hidest thou thyself in times of trouble? The wicked in his pride doth persecute the poor. Let them be taken in the devices that they have imagined. For the wicked boasted of his heart's desire, and blessed the covetous whom the Lord abhorred. The wicked through the pride of his countenance will not seek after God. God is not in all his thoughts. His ways are always grievous. Thy judgments are far above out of his sight. As for all his enemies, he puffed at them. He had said in his heart, I shall not be moved, for I shall never be in adversity. His mouth is full of cursing and deceit and fraud. Under his tongue is mischief and vanity. He seated in the lurking places of the villages, in the secret places that he murdered the innocent. His eyes are privily set against the poor. He lied in wait secretly as a lion in his den. He lied in wait to catch the poor. He doth catch the poor when he draweth him into his net. He crutcheth and humbled himself that the poor may fall by his strong ones. He had said in his heart, God had forgotten. He hided his face. He will never see it. Arise, O Lord, O God, lift up thine hand. Forget not the humble. Wherefore doth the wicked contempt God? He hath said in his heart, Thou wilt not require it. Thou hast seen it, for thou beholdest mischief and spite to requite it with thine hand. The poor committed himself unto thee. Thou art the helper of the fatherless. Break thou the arm of the wicked and the evil man. Seek out his wickedness till thou find none. The Lord is king forever and ever. The hidden are perished out of his hand. Lord, thou hast heard the desire of the humble. Thou wilt prepare their heart. Thou wilt cause thine ear to hear, to hear, to judge the fatherless and the oppressed, that the man of the earth may no more oppress. This is the word of the Lord. 
And all the saints shall say, Eginomus, thanks be to God. What did you learn? What did you learn? What did you learn? Okay, so there are these times. It's not just new to us. It's not happening only to us. We're not the only ones whom at some point in time in our lives will feel like God is away, like God is far away. I spoke about the footprints the last time, right? And he says, why standest thou afar off, O Lord? Why hidest thyself in times of trouble? The guy was thinking that the two footprints that were left on the ground were his. And so he was saying, God, when the waves were just raging and everything, you know, I started seeing just two footprints instead of four. What's happening? Why did you leave me alone when the storms were raging? And God told him, what makes you think those were your footprints? They're mine, darling. I lifted you up when the storms were raging because I knew that you were not going to be able to stand it. So sometimes it's not new. We're not the first persons that get to a point and we feel like, oh, God is a far off. God is not listening to us. God is not saying anything. We're just from reading the book of Job. We saw how Job was thinking like God has abandoned him. At some point, he started feeling like maybe he has really sinned. Maybe he has really done something. But then if he has, he knows that from the kind of relationship we have with God, God is going to tell him you've done this so that he should fix it. So he should repent and fix it. But for some weird reason, God wasn't saying anything. I remember also just recently some, I mean, like people were just pressuring me on some things and talking and talking and talking. And then I'm like, God, I know, I know, like, I know that you're really not gotten to that place yet. And then one of my prayer partners just told me that, don't worry, princess. Sometimes God is just silent because he's walking behind the scene. There is nothing you can do about it. You cannot force God's hands. If God is walking behind the scene because he's preparing something for you, like maybe he's even building capacity in you for the next level, you cannot force his hand to do the next thing. He won't do it. He won't do it. It's not how much you cry. It's not how much you exercise faith. It's about God's timing. There are times that we are desiring some things at a particular time that we're not yet qualified for it. Let's be honest with ourselves. We're not yet qualified for some of the things that we're desiring and praying to God and asking for in faith. Some of those things, we just want them for wanting sake. Some of those things, we just want them to compete. Let's be honest with ourselves because we can't lie to ourselves. We can't lie to God. Let's be honest. But like I said, feeling like God is afar off, feeling like God is not there with you, feeling like God has abandoned you, it's not a new thing. It's not today. It, this is David who is a man after God's heart. He also felt that way at some point in time. So we would feel that at some point in time in our lives. So don't sit there and be thinking, uh -huh. you will feel it. You will feel it. Says the wicked in his pride do persecute the poor. Let them be taken in the devices that they have imagined. For the wicked boasted of his heart's desires and blessed the covetous whom the Lord abhorred. Of course, the wicked is only doing things that will provoke God, right? That will get God angry. And of course, so when we start doing those things that God has said we should not do, we're well, wicked we people. In essence, we're well, wicked we people. When we're doing the things that God said we should not do, we're well, wicked we people. We're very, very wicked people. It says, you bless the covetous. When God abhors these people, God doesn't like this attitude of these people, but you're blessing them. So it's like you're encouraging them. It says, whatever you reward gets repeated, right? That's what a wise man once said. Whatever gets rewarded gets repeated. So if I do something right now and it's rewarded, there's a possibility, the very high possibility that I would do it again. And that's why you see some of these children that are being spoiled and pampered. Like they fail their exams instead of maybe giving them a little bit of like challenging thing to do or some kind of disciplinary action taking place. Their parents would just give them all these nice things, buy them this stuff and all that. And so they feel like, oh, well, I got rewarded for it. So I should not bother. I got rewarded for this thing. So I should not bother. Like, you know, hmm. It is well, Sha. It is well. It says, um, the wicked through the pride of his countenance will not seek after God. Oh yeah. Some people are so boastful. They say, ah, 
I have everything. Well, what do I need from God? There are some people who literally ask those kinds of questions, you know. And then I also ask them questions like, okay, I also have everything. I'm not frustrated. Like, why do, why do I have God too? Because sometimes they look at people. Yes, there are some Christians who have just made the gospel look like it's really for frustrated people. They're looking so haggard. They're looking so shabby and everything. You don't need to break a bank to look neat. I said look neat. I didn't say wear designers and all those things. Because it's not even the designers that give you the stuff. There are some people that will wear designers and look like, I don't know. I don't want to call names. So it's not about a designer. It's about what looks good on you. And what fits you and what suits you. Let's get that. Let's know that I know peace. It's not about designers. Okay. And so he says, um, God has said, so some of these people are saying, God is not in his thoughts. God is not in their minds. God is not in any of their things that they do because they're like, what do I need the guy for? Like, you know, sometimes if some people who are not very wealthy, they pray because they want wealth. When they become wealthy, they're like, why should I pray again for wealth? You have some people ask questions like, because somebody said, um, a church is a hospital. So you have all kinds of people there. So some people ask that, oh, if the church is a hospital, when I go to the hospital and get well, what do I need to be doing at the hospital again? I'm supposed to leave now. Logically speaking, it is true. But that's not the way, that's not the kind of hospital we're talking here about. It's not the kind of hospital we're talking here about. You need spiritual nourishment. <clears throat> you need spiritual nourishment. He says, his ways are always grievous. That judgment are far above out of his sight. As for all his enemy, he puffed at them. He had said in his heart, I shall not be moved. For I shall never be in adversity. That's what he says. He thinks his money can do a lot of things for him. He believes that he's the best of the best and all that. His mouth is full of cursing and deceit and fraud. Under his tongue is mischief and vanity. See, an evil person, right? They have the, 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 the nature, the Adamic nature in them, the nature of sin. So it's manifesting in all these other ways. You can't really blame them. It's their nature. You can only manifest your nature. So that's why we need the nature of Christ. When Jesus came and died on the cross, he took your place and then gave you the nature of Christ. He imputed in you righteousness. <clears throat> so now it's the nature of Christ that makes you abhor sin. It's the nature of Christ that makes you abhor fornication, abhor lies, telling, grudge bearing, just name it. It's the nature of Christ. So if you've not accepted Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, there is that tendency that somehow, somehow, you might do something somewhere someday that is not going to be funny. Oh, yeah. And so he says, I shall not move. I shall never be in adversity. He's so sure that he's secure. He's safe. He's cursing people. He's just doing all these terrible things. It is his nature. Don't be mad. Don't be angry. Rather, just pray for them. It's their nature. They can't give what they don't have. He's seated in the lucky lurking places of the villages. In the secret places does he murder the innocent. His eyes are privily set against the poor. He lied in wait secretly as a lion in his den. He lied in wait to catch the poor. He does catch the poor when he draweth him into his net. There are traps that the enemy is setting for us. <clears throat> Children of God. We need to be sensitive. We need to know what God is saying per time. We need to know what God is doing per time. We need to know where God wants us to be. How God wants us to get on with the things that he wants us to get on with. We need to know. We need to know. We need to know. So he says, um, he crushed and humbled himself. That the poor may fall by his strong, by the strong ones. We need a spirit of discernment to know all these nets, to know all these traps that the enemy put. And sometimes it's in view with like, 
maybe God has told you who you're supposed to become, what you're supposed to do. And then you said it in passing, like out there because the enemy doesn't know the plan of God for her life. So he might know some little, little things. He might have some little ideas here and there because of things we've said and all he really doesn't know. Most times we're the ones who go and put our visions out there prematurely and then they die before their time. A premature baby is supposed to be in an incubator. You remove them from the incubator, they will die. Because their system has not been built enough, well enough to be able to carry the capacity of the earth without that kind of incubation light that they need. So when they dwell in that incubation life for a season now, their body, their system will be able to take in all. All that is happening in the world. So if you carry that vision, that mission and put it out there when it's not yet time, you'll probably lose it. Because you now have grown the capacity to be able to handle it. You just might lose it. Say he had said in his heart, God had forgotten. He hided his face. He will never see. <laughs> you know, that's what always happens with us. When we're doing something that is not good, that is not godly. And then it's just going smoothly. We're like, oh, God is not seeing this one. No. Uh, he will never see this one. No. Uh, let's just do it. and enjoy stuff. Uh, after all, we'll finish and ask for forgiveness now. Hmm. Child of God, oh, you never know. You never know. God is seeing it. God is omnipresent. He's omnipotent. He's omniscience. God is everywhere. The earlier we stop being man conscious and being God conscious, the better for us. Because when we are God conscious as opposed to man conscious, we will know not to do some of those things in the secret places where Papa or Mama cannot see us or that brother or that sister cannot see us. But in that nook and cranny, God can see you. God can see you. So don't think, oh, they might be doing these their things and getting away with it. And you're like, it looks like God is really not seeing it. As they are saying, oh, God is not seeing it. God is not seeing it. But the one time, the one time, God will arise and show up. And that's the next thing he's calling on God. Arise, O Lord, O God, lift up thine hand, forget not the humble. The Bible cannot forget the humble. The Bible cannot. The Lord cannot forget the humble. He cannot even destroy the righteous with the unrighteous. So he cannot forget. Say, wherefore that the wicked man contend God, he has said in his heart, that will not require it. He has said that as long as God had not asked for it before, God will not ask for it now. Ah, things are different now. Things are different now. God will require it of you. There's sometimes God will look at some things and he'll wink, he'll overlook. Oh, but now you will have to get it right. Thou hast seen it, for thou be all this mischief and spite to requite it with thine hand. The poor committed itself unto thee. Thou art the helper of the fatherless. Yes, you said you are the father to the fatherless and the husbands to the widows. Lord, answer your name. Show yourself faithful in our lives and lives of our family members friends relatives and loved ones in and out of the nation break down the arm of the wicked and the evil man seek out his wickedness till thou found none may the good lord crush nullify destroy consume the plans of the wicked one in the mighty name of jesus May their plans be destroyed. May their arms be broken. May they confess their faults. The Lord is king forever and ever. The hidden have perished out of his hand. May the good Lord help us. That will not perish out of his hands. May the good Lord help us. 
that will not perish out of his hands in Jesus' name. Lord, thou hast heard the desire of the humble. Thou will prepare their heart. Thou will cause their, thine ear to hear. The Lord always hears our prayers. He always hears our prayers. Let nobody deceive you. As long as you are a child of God, born a fight Christian, the Lord hears your prayers. He has three answers. Yes, no, and wait. Wait is actually a delayed yes, if you think about it. Wait is just a delayed yes. And why are you getting that delayed yes? You're getting a delayed yes because probably God is still building capacity in you, child of God. He's still building you to that place where he wants you to get to. He's still building you to that place where he wants you to trust him, to rely on him, to depend on him. He's still building you. And when God is done building you, child of God, you'll be in awe. You'll be in awe. Totally and completely. Don't be worried. Don't be worked up. God is is preparing you for something big. He's preparing you for center stage. And he has to prepare the stage and the people that are going to back you up. Lord, thou hast heard the desire of the humble. Thou will prepare their heart. Thou will cause thine ears to hear. God always hears. If there is a man to pray, there's a God to answer. If there is a man to pray, there's a God to answer. Are there people who are ready to pray? Because as for God, he's ready to answer. As for God, he's ready to answer. But is there a man to pray? Is there a man to stand the gap? The Bible says somewhere that I sought for a man to stand the gap and I found none. Lord, I'm available. Here I am. I'm ready to stand the gap. Can you avail yourself? Can you avail yourself? It says to judge the fatherless and the oppressed that the man of the earth may no more oppress. God doesn't like oppression. And when he sees that people are being oppressed, he will come through for them. And woe betide you that you're the one who is the oppressor. Woe betide you that you're the oppressor. The Bible already says somewhere that it's better that a millstone is hung on your neck and you're dumped in water. I say it vexes God so that you no one may even your die body floats. <laughs> we had better be careful, oh. Ah, I always pray me, oh. I said normally the truth is that the Bible can take you to hell or to heaven. Before, when someone said that, I'll be so mad. But it's the truth. You can interpret the Bible. You can be wrong and sincerely wrong. God will not pardon you for that, oh. You are supposed to seek the word yourself. And get a confirmation for yourself before anything else. May the good Lord help us. That will be the ones fulfilling the good scriptures, not the bad ones. Because that's the unfortunate situation. If life has to go on, if life has to go on, if it has to move on, if you have to get it right. Then you need to be the one fulfilling the right scriptures, not the wrong ones. And may the good Lord give us stamina and grace to come back and do all, all that he has in store for us and even do more. To judge the fatherless and the oppressed, that the man of the earth may no more oppress. God doesn't want oppression. God doesn't like oppression. When he sees that people are being oppressed, he always makes a way. He always makes a way. Lord, thank you. Father, help us this day, oh God. If there's going to be someone who will be fulfilling the right scriptures in the Bible, will be using the manual right, Lord, it's going to be your children, oh God. Father, I pray, oh God, that you're going to help us, oh God, to be relieved, oh God, of every trouble. Lord, you're going to empower us, oh God, to be able to do your will, oh God, and to do it to the letter. 
Lord, we worship you, O God. We magnify you, O King of glory. There is none like unto thee, O God. Father, I pray, O God, that you're going to open the eyes of your people to be able to discern and know what you're up to, when you're up to and why you're up to it. Lord, we thank you, God. We give you all the praise because you deserve it. There is none like unto thee, O God. Father, we worship you. We magnify you, O God. We give you all the praise. We give you all the honor. Lord, we pray, O God, strengthen your daughter and take her back to her duty post. Strengthen your daughter and take her back to her duty post, O God. Father, strengthen all your people. Strengthen your sons and daughters and help them to be able to be on time. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, King of Glory. Because we know you've done it already. We know that you've come through for us already. We know that you're ready to do and undo for us. We give you all the praise, O oh God. Father, we pray that you're going to minister to us in a very special way, O oh Lord. That we're going to be able to hold on and hold out. That fulfillment is going to be us fulfilling the right scripture for the right people. Thank you, Lord God, because we know you always hear and answer us. For in Jesus' name we pray. And all the saints shall say a big amen. I always get to say I love you so very much, but God loves you way, way more. Get to like, share, and subscribe. Don't forget to hit the notification bell so you get all our updates each time we upload a new video or we get to go live. Ha, ha, ha. It has been your favorite girl, Princess Cleeton, Queen of Hearts, and Laughter. Mom Tipo Melvis is like, wow, I just got here when they were finishing. What's going on? <laughs> yeah, the chapters are the chapters are kind of short right now, but we're looking forward to the longest of the longest of the longest in the Bible. So if you have any addition to give today, if you have any addition to add on the program, you're free, you're on, it's open, the floor is yours, you can request to come live. It could be your quiet time, it could be anything. It doesn't necessarily have to be Sam Stan because sometimes you might also come and you don't even know the sounds we're talking about. So I pray, oh God, that you're going to help her in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord God. Because we know you always hear an answer in Jesus' name. And all the saints shall say a big amen. Guys, you can send in your prayer requests. You can put them in the comment section. You can send them to my inbox. And we're going to join our faith with yours and pray. The Lord said so. And the Lord is going to fix it. Thank you, Father, for always hearing and answering us. Thank you, Father, for loving the, us the way you do. Thank you, Father, for being an amazing Father. Thank you for everything. Thank you for all that you've done, all you're doing, and all you're still to do in our lives and the lives of all your children. In Jesus' mighty and blessed name. Let your word be a living epistle. Let's be a living epistle read of men. Let your word be a practical reality in our lives. That we're going to be doers of the word and not just hearers only. So that we're going to bring many more people to the household of faith. Thank you, Heavenly Father. For in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So until tomorrow is going to be Psalms 11. Yes. Hey, people. I went for trade fair today. I took some a couple of videos. I'm going to put them on. And you're going to have a nice time with me. You're going to go along with me. Tomorrow is another day. Don't miss out. Don't forget. Read ahead of time. It's going to be Psalms 11. You have the audio Bible on TikTok, Facebook, and YouTube. You can go on there. Listen so that you can build your faith. The Bible says faith coming by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Until next time. Ciao, ciao.